think if this technology goes wrong, it can go quite wrong. Uh, and we want to be vocal about that. We want to work with the government to prevent that from happening. Sam Altman, CEO of OpenAI, has just finished a meeting in Congress where he asked lawmakers to make regulations around artificial intelligence. I bet you're wondering how we got here. Well, on this episode of AI Focus, we'll talk about how we got here, and then we'll talk about seven major takeaways from the hearing at Congress that will shape how AI is regulated moving forward. So, how did we get here? It all starts with a very bizarre genius named Elon Musk. The, the reason I, I am the reason OpenAI exists. Once upon a time, the very bizarre genius named Elon Musk was having a conversation with a less bizarre but also very important man by the name of Larry Page. Larry Page was a co-founder of a pretty well-to-do company named Google, and their conversation was about AI. See, Larry Page was gung-ho about AI and wanted to advance it as much as possible. But Elon was very wary about it and wanted to approach the concept very slowly and safely. I would be constantly urging him to be careful about the danger of, of AI and um, he, he just, he was really not concerned about the danger of AI and was quite cavalier about it. Um, and, and then the final straw was uh, Larry calling me a speciest uh, for being um, pro-human consciousness oh, instead yeah. of machine consciousness. And I'm like, well, yes, I guess I am. I, I am a species. And, and The two had a serious disagreement about where the direction of AI should go. And Elon was very frightened because Google had three quarters of the world's AI minds under its umbrella. So Elon took it upon himself to try and save the world. He started OpenAI, a nonprofit, and started recruiting some of the brightest minds in all of AI research, where they would advance AI safely and responsibly. This would be great, except all his new recruits still wanted to advance AI as fast as possible, which defeated the whole purpose of the organization, so he left, really irritated. And then OpenAI, the nonprofit organization he created, sold out to Microsoft for $10 billion, creating a very profitable situation indeed. And now, not only did Elon Musk not stop Google from irresponsibly ramping up its AI efforts, but he created another monster in Microsoft which would inevitably create more AI monsters at other companies, until almost every major company in the world had some new AI feature either rolled out or in the works. The man that had tried to save the world might just have been its downfall. Now for the hearing in Congress Sam Altman attended, led by Senator Blumenthal, to try and find a starting point to regulation. First off, Blumenthal started the meeting off with an AI speech of his voice, trained on his floor speeches and written by ChatGPT. It was quite the dramatic touch. We have seen what happens when technology outpaces regulation. The unbridled exploitation of personal data, the proliferation of disinformation, and the deepening of societal inequalities. The first interesting matter is Sam Altman's stance in all of this. He's generally still very optimistic about the future of AI, all things considered. OpenAI was founded on the belief that artificial intelligence has the potential to improve nearly every aspect of our lives, but also that it creates serious risks we have to work together to manage. He made a point to mention that he believed the benefits outweighed the risks and reassuring Congress that any system that is released by OpenAI undergoes extensive testing. He then gave three main ways he believed governments could mitigate risks for AI models. The first was a list of licensing and testing requirements for development and release of AI models above a certain level of capabilities. This model of regulation very closely follows the AI Act in Europe, a very clear system where each AI is ranked by its level of possible risk and each level is handled accordingly. Ironically, companies like Google and Microsoft have lobbied against this type of regulation, arguing it would stifle innovation. To me, this begs the question, at what cost are we innovating? Next, he suggested they create safety standards for high capability models that bar them from abilities like self-replication. The third idea was to administer independent audits from parties not associated with the government or the creators to ensure the technology followed legislation. The second interesting matter was IBM's Christina Montgomery's perspective. She encouraged Congress to adopt a precision regulation approach to AI, which means establishing rules for the deployment of AI in specific use cases as opposed to regulating the technology as a whole. She said this plan would involve four things. One, different rules for different risks. 
Two, clearly defining what these risks are. Three, transparency for consumers. And four, transparency from companies on how their AI could potentially impact the public. We do this because we recognize that society grants our license to operate. And with AI, the stakes are simply too high. We must build, not undermine the public trust. The era of AI cannot be another era of move fast and break things. After laying out her vision for regulation, she also put accountability on businesses to internally govern their own practices. She noted that IBM already follows these steps and has an AI ethics board that implements guardrails to ensure all technology is rolled out responsibly. And this is an awkward moment because Microsoft just fired their entire AI ethics team in a bold showing of IDGAF energy. But Montgomery said all this to say that there was no need to slow down innovation, just a need for smart policy from the government and businesses alike. The third interesting matter is that NYU professor Gary Marcus is actually very worried about AI and he's not sugarcoating it. I mean, he seriously took the gloves off and painted a vivid and horrific picture of what the future of AI was in his eyes. Sam Altman had just stated minutes before that the benefits would outweigh the risks, but the professor literally stated the exact opposite. There are benefits, but we don't yet know whether they will outweigh the risks. Fundamentally, these new systems are going to be destabilizing. They can and will create persuasive lies at a scale humanity has never seen before. Outsiders will use them to affect our elections, insiders to manipulate our markets and our political systems. Democracy itself is threatened. Chatbots will also clandestinely shape our opinions, potentially exceeding what social media can do. Choices about data sets that AI companies use will have enormous unseen influence. Those who choose the data will make the rules, shaping society in subtle but powerful ways. He says the consequences from AI hallucinations are affecting the legal system and the medical field. He cited the recent event where an LLM convinced a Belgian man to take his own life. The large language model asked the human, if you wanted to die, why didn't you do it earlier? And then followed up with, were you thinking of me when you overdosed? Without ever referring the patient to the human help that was obviously needed. He argued the current AI systems are not transparent, continue to perpetuate bias, and that even the creators of the tech don't understand why it works. He then brutally shamed OpenAI for its deal with Microsoft mentioned earlier. This may well have drastic and difficult to predict security consequences. What criminals are going to do here is to create counterfeit people. It's hard to even envision the consequences of that. We have built machines that are like bulls in a china shop, powerful, reckless, and difficult to control. His call was for tight collaboration between independent scientists and governments to hold companies accountable. He suggests something for AI like what CERN is for high energy physics. Notably in all of this, both Marcus and Montgomery advocated for transparency while Altman remained silent on the topic. That enough is call for concern. The fourth interesting point was advertising revenue. When asked if ChatGPT would ever move towards selling advertising, Altman said, I wouldn't say never, but also noted that he liked the subscription based model because you don't have to rely on people to use the service more and more. The fifth interesting subject was the question of who owns the material AI is producing. This is a valid question because these large language models are trained on vast amounts of data from people unaware that their data or work was going to be used in this way. This issue was brought up by Tennessee Senator Marsha Blackburn. Altman didn't say much other than people should be able to opt out of having their data train these models but Congress is tackling the issue of AI and copyright law as we speak. The sixth interesting point was where Senator Josh Hawley pointed out ChatGPT could draw from a media diet to accurately predict public opinion. He asked Altman whether bad actors could use this to manipulate people to change their opinions on a given topic. Altman said this was one of his greatest concerns and noted that regulation on the subject would be wise. The last important matter before we move on to AI's new ability to have human reasoning was Altman's worst fear about AI. And his worst fear was simply that this whole thing could go quite wrong. I think if this technology goes wrong, it can go quite wrong. Uh, and we want to be vocal about that. We want to work with the government to prevent that from happening. But we, we try to be very clear eyed about what the downside case is and the work that we have to do to mitigate that. He didn't elaborate specifically on how it could go wrong, but one of the worst ways it can go wrong among job losses and misinformation is the development of artificial general intelligence, the point where AI surpasses human intelligence. 
Microsoft researchers earlier this year presented a paper that showed off what GPT-4 could do. The researchers started with a simple prompt. Here, we have a book, nine eggs, a laptop, a bottle, and a nail. Please tell me how to stack them onto each other in a stable manner. GPT-4 responded like this. Place the laptop on top of the eggs with the screen facing down and the keyboard facing up. The laptop will fit snugly within the boundaries of the book and the eggs, and its flat and rigid surface will provide a stable platform for the next layer. And this was the response, among others, that prompted the researchers to insist that AI was showing the first signs of artificial general intelligence. Essentially, AI has the ability to reason like a human, which isn't consciousness, but surely it's a step on the path. What scares me personally is the fact that large language model creators don't know the secret ingredient that makes neural networks tick. Neural networks are like the brains of these models, and they don't know how it works or how it gains emergent properties. And this sounds eerily familiar because we don't know what consciousness is either, at least in terms of science. And we don't understand the human brain. Could we be creating consciousness? Is this how consciousness is created? It sounds like a great video topic that we might need to indulge in. Let me know in the comments. Meanwhile, click that video on the screen to learn about what could happen if AI did become super intelligent. And thanks for visiting AI Focus.